Welcome to New Zealand. Thank you. We've had some fun the last few days. Craig's been very good to learn some Kiwi words and phrases. He's making friends everywhere he goes. He's, he's made more friends than I've got already. He's only been here for 48 hours. So, um, All right, Craig, it's great to have you here. Uh, you are married to Emily, and you are the father of 14 children with 14th on the way. You currently live in Bremerton, Washington. So tell us a bit about your family, what you like to do together, and a bit about the area in which you live. Yeah, so um, my wife, Emily, and I have been married for 23 years. And we've uh, been blessed with a, a beautiful family, a large family. And uh, Bremerton is a city uh, due west of Seattle. So if you look on a map and you find Seattle, you take a ferry to get to Bremerton, or you drive around and go over the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. If you ever come to visit, all of you are welcome. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. We have guest, guest quarters, and we'd love to, to host any of you if you ever make your way over to the west coast of, of the United States. Um, it's a port town. Um, it's a large Navy community, so we have a, a good, uh, a hard-working town. We have 12,000 people employed by the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. It's the largest shipyard on the West Coast. And so um, our church is made up of people that work in Seattle, uh, that take the ferry, and that work in buildings, you know, in in offices, and um, people that work at the shipyard as everything from welders and engineers to uh, people that are in the Navy. We have a large naval community uh, in our our town. So uh, both... uh, 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 aircraft carrier fleet and um, a large submarine fleet. So, and what we like to do as family, um, we love to do a lot of things. We love to be together as a family, um, and we we enjoy um, going on adventures. We just came back from family camp right before coming here, um, and uh, I think that time together uh, is valuable to us. We have. Uh, Kids that uh, love to do various and sundry things. Um, My boys, uh, four oldest boys, have played rugby the last four years. (laughs) And uh, and then uh, I have daughters that are married, my oldest daughters, and I guess we'll get get to some of those questions probably. How about the rugby, eh? Is that impressive? I'll let you into a secret here. It's off the cuff. We're going to go to a rugby game together. But I've never been to one before, and I've lived here for 20 years. So I thought it was about time that I kind of assimilated with the, the people. So Craig's quite, quite pleased to be able to take us to our first ever rugby game. But Okay, moving on. Craig, how did you come to Christ? Um, I'm privileged to grow up in a Christian home, and I, I trusted Christ as a young boy, about six years old. Uh, never knew a time when I didn't love Jesus and want to follow Jesus, and um, I came under conviction and, and uh, came to my mom and w- w- at the kitchen table and uh, I j- called upon the name of the Lord, and obviously in a childlike, simple faith that, that throughout time you know, has been tested and tried and at times of wandering uh, in my youth and um, uh, going through the difficulties of... Um, my parents divorcing and things when I was a young boy caused a lot of those things, a lot of freedoms that I had that I pushed the limits on, and God always was w- working in me and convicting me and kind of revealing that I belong to Him, and so that's how I came to know Christ, but I'm grateful for a lineage of Christians uh, back a few generations. It's really encouragement. Isn't that the best testimony we want for our children? You don't necessarily have to testimony with all this stuff that you wish you didn't do so that's a blessing unfortunately i did a lot of those things you did a lot of those things as well right uh (laughs) god god was gracious and merciful Mm. craig how did you and your wife emily meet uh we met in high school we went to astoria high school and uh i uh i saw her one day and uh (laughs) <laughs> I, I asked her if she was going to, looking forward to coming to high school because she was trying out to be a cheerleader. And she said, well, I've been here all year because I thought she was in eighth grade coming into high school. Um, I don't know how your grade system is here, but ninth, 10th, and 11th, and 12th is high school. And uh, uh, sh- so that, that didn't go so well <laughs> when you <laughs> didn't notice her for 
the whole year, and then you ask if she's coming, and she's excited. But uh, I knew her sister, who was an upperclassman, uh, had graduated, and so knowing that they were related, I, I kept trying to talk to her about how her sister was doing. And so <laughs> I finally went to her church on a Sunday afternoon, and um, kind of providentially, our, and, and there's a lot of things that I wouldn't do with my children that we did. Uh, so our first date was on Mother's Day, which, you know, 20... Six years later, it's kind of providential that <laughs> she's the mother of 13, of 14th on the way. Did you always think you'd have a large family? When we got married, we both come from families of three, two girls and a boy in that order. And uh, we thought we'd have four children, and we thought we'd like two girls and two boys. So that was a pretty large family in, rea in reality to most Americans. And our first four children were two girls and two boys. But it was when we had our second child, Anna, that my wife um, came to me and she just said, um, Craig, why is it that we trust the Lord for you know, our finances? We trust the Lord to help us to reach people for Christ. We trust the Lord for every other kind of provision. But when it comes to our children, we say, we're going to have this many and this time frame, and this is how it's going to work. And um, she said, why don't we trust the Lord? In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And it really means, you know, don't lean on the ways that you think are best, but lean on the Lord's path and, and trust his way, even when it doesn't make sense in, in the culture. That's what faith is, is, is trusting in the things that we don't understand always. And <clears throat> this is, I was young. I was a young husband. We got married very young. And I said something profoundly dumb, like, we're going to have as many kids as I say we're going to have, and that's the end of the story. <laughs> How many of you ladies would recognize that that doesn't probably go over very well? Probably translates <laughs> into New Zealand just fine. Um, and she, she entreated me in a really gracious way rather than um, fighting against that. And she just said, Craig, I know you believe God's word. I know you're a Bible guy. Just study it out and search the scriptures. And so I did. And when I got done, uh, I just said, you know, God opens and closes the womb. Children are counted as a blessing and not a curse. They're like arrows in the hand of a mighty man. They're like olive plants round about thy table. Just over and over again in the scripture, you see when God blesses, like one family gave him 10 you know, 10 children. Job lost all of his wealth and his family. He was given 10 more children. He, he, it wasn't counted as a curse. And that, you know, um, the heartache of barrenness is revealed in scripture too. That is something that is a yearning of the, of the heart to want to have children. So it's a good and a, and a, and a, and a beautiful desire. And yet if somebody is, uh, is um, barren, their contentment still is in Christ and they're trusting the Lord just as much as I am. So we came to the place where we said, Lord, whatever you give us, we'll receive. And we didn't think or know that we would have 14 children, but God did. And uh, I'm grateful for my wife being uh, uh, a, a true help suitable uh, to speak the truth and love to me. And God used that in a powerful way. And I don't regret it. Awesome. Okay, slightly different questions now. What's your favorite food? Spicy. Okay. <laughs> I, I love all kinds of food, honestly, but I love Mexican, Indian, uh, Thai. Just, I love, I, I had a really good steak and cheese and bacon pie today that was excellent. A kiwi pie, now you've arrived. What's the most un-American thing you've seen in New Zealand since you arrived here, apart from kiwis? Um, probably just the, the, the most obvious thing is that you drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how to win friends and influence people. I'm just, we drive on the wrong side of the road, okay? I want to, yep. no, but I've been to a lot of places where they drive on the wrong side of, on the, <laughs> on the left side of the road, how, however you would say it. Different. <laughs> <laughs> this was funny though. We were, we were backing up from Chris's house and I'm in the seat that normally is the driver's seat. 
And he started backing up, and I intuitively looked out the window, <laughs> looked out the window like this, and I, I went up like this, <laughs> and there was no steering wheel there. I wonder why he was trying to get off the dashboard. <laughs> thought he'd lost his sunglasses or something. Okay, tell us a bit about your call to ministry and the church you now pastor. So, um, all of my life, I, I was always a dreamer and wanting to be a variety of things, always something to do with helping people. I wanted to be in law enforcement or be a firefighter, um, uh, maybe own a small fleet of fishing vessels on the side or something like that. I grew up in a coastal town, and, uh, uh, but the Lord had other plans. And when I was 19, I really uh, had been going to college. I was married already. I was working for Pepsi Cola as a driver salesman, a commercial truck driver and, and sales and service and um, pursuing a degree to go towards law enforcement. And the Lord just really began to overwhelmingly just put a desire in my heart to do more in, in the church and to be around my pastor and just like there was an insatiable desire to just do the things of the Lord. And he turned the desire of my heart into wanting to, to do ministry. And other people, I think, recognized it in me before I recognized it. It was just in me a passion, a desire. And the Bible says if a man desire the office of a bishop or a pastor, he, he desires a good thing. And I think that that burden began to, to grow. And so I started training in our church's School of Ministry, we called that a Bible Institute, and trained under my pastor in a kind of Paul-Timothy type relationship, and started preaching anywhere they would let me, the rescue mission, the jail, um, they let me out, which is always good, um, and uh, going to visit small churches that needed pulpit supply, and, and then God uh, allowed me to plant a church. I was 22 years old. My wife and I moved, left a really good job, and uh, uh, moved with promise of $200 a month support, and I was just, I wasn't concerned, and the Lord provided, and um, it was a busy season. We had three young children, and I worked side jobs to make ends meet, and the Lord allowed us to plant a church in St. Helens, Oregon. We were there for four years, and then we moved to Bremerton uh, in 2002, and through a series of just things that the Lord made very evidently clear. We weren't, can't, we weren't sending out resumes or anything. It just through uh, going to the church for a, a meeting and then the pastor calling and asking if I would come back and preach a week-long meeting there, a uh, Bible conference. And just by the, by the end of the first night, I told my wife, I said, I don't know why and I don't know when, but I know that God is calling us to Bremerton. And that was the, the Spirit of God just impressing upon my heart and it was... 51 weeks later that I became the pastor of that church. Mm -hmm. So I've been there for 15, over 15 years. And it's a congregation of around 300 people. And it's a vibrant uh, uh, church family that's it's, it's simple in a lot of ways. It's not over-programmed, but it's passionate uh, for the Lord. Okay, favorite book of the Bible and why? Uh, probably the book of Ephesians impacted me, and, and usually I say whatever book is the book I'm preaching through is my favorite book because I'm living in it, I'm saturating in it, but the book of Ephesians is so clear and succinct with the first three chapters being so theological and Christ-centered as far as just focusing us on Christ, and then the, the last three chapters so practical, dealing with everything from you know, how to be a faithful husband, father mother, wife, Christian uh, servant, to being uh, a pastor, to um, you know, putting on the armor of God to be strong in the faith, to have how to be a good employer or a good employee, all of it is in those chapters. So I just, I love the succinctness of the, of the book of Ephesians and the power of it. So. The most influential Christian in your life. That's a hard question. Um, probably in my history would be, uh, as I think about it, uh, my mother and my grandmother, um, who just had a um, faithfulness and a, a, a consistent 
walk with the Lord. And I always remember them. My grandmother was in her 80s still hosting a Bible study in her home. There's something significant and special about that that I know marked me. And then a, a man by the name of Bill Bramlett, my own father, uh, too. My, my parents d- divorced, but they both continued to to serve the Lord, and, and I'm grateful for both of them. But a man named Bill Bramlett really became a father to me in the ministry. He's a pastor for, he's still living, but he's probably 55 or 60 years in the ministry. And so I would say that. And my wife, hmm. honestly. It's great you've got your son Nathaniel with you on this trip. Can you describe his personality in three words? Um, Godly, uh, caring, and uh, a, a warrior, strong. Mm. That's awesome. You just reminded me there was a, a video that Craig's church did for him in his 15 years of ministry where multiple people in the congregation described Craig in two words. It's, I think we posted it on our Facebook page. It's very, very you get to find out heaps. <clears throat> okay, what does getting ready for church on a Sunday morning at the Houston house I look like? Well, it starts on Sunday night, and I would say this for every family. Um, if you want to be prepared for the Lord's Day, um, similar to how Tehillah talked about uh, the, the Sabbath, and um, even though there may be some differences in, in our practices, I think setting apart the Lord's Day is important in the life of the Christian and that that begins the night before as we prepare things, um, whether that's starting to prepare the meal, um, our clothes, those things. So that Sunday morning, when, when undoubtedly there seems to be like extra things that just get thrown in, and that helps the, the morning. Sunday morning, we do things more simply as far as like it's cold cereal morning rather than hot cereal morning. It's it's uh, things like that, but it's usually not too crazy. Or chaotic. most of the kids have ba- bathed the night before, except for the older kids. And um, but it can sometimes be a hurry and scurry, and something. You know, if there's a time where where we don't have our evening routine, like we get in late because we had a wedding out of town or something, then it's like the next morning is is really hard. Even though you know you're at church, our church service starts at ten, and that's later than most days of the week for most everything you do, but for some reason it seems like there's always a little more attack. Okay, Craig, you've got two daughters who are now married. There's a book that many of us are quite familiar with by Vodi Bokum called What He Needs to Be If He Wants to Marry My Daughter. What did your sons-in-laws need to be to get your daughter's hand in marriage? What was at the top of the list? Godly. They, they love Jesus. Manly. Um, I... I don't want my daughters to uh, marry a man they feel like they have to protect. And um, you know, a passion for the things of the Lord. I, I have uh, two fine son-in-laws and I'm grateful for both of them and the situations. One was a young man I knew for seven years. It was in our church and uh, I had an appreciation for him and a, I was grateful for him and the other one uh, my daughter just got married in July. We met their family. Uh, I met their, his mom and sisters a few years ago, a couple times at, and, and at a conference they were serving at, and I just thought they were some special, uh, their servants' hearts and hospitality. And then when I met this young man, actually before I met him, um, I was praying about the Lord's leadership and two other young men that were pursuing my daughter and I just didn't have the peace of God about it and the Lord brought to mind this young man that I had not yet met and um, shared it with my wife and we just prayed and after some season, the Lord allowed that to, to work out and uh, in a real powerful way, last August, was we met them as families in April last year and they got married July this year. But they didn't have, they weren't in a relationship of courtship until um, September of okay. last year. So. Okay, well there's gonna be lots of time to ask lots of questions and 
get to know Craig a lot better. We're going to have lots of time for Q&A. Just um, on a personal note, Craig, and I know you've said that you're comfortable talking about this, it's been an extremely challenging year for your family. It's been a time in perhaps more than any other time in your life you experienced the reality of God's sovereignty taking your life on a different course that no amount of planning or prioritizing could have prevented. Would you mind sharing a little bit about that for us? Yeah. Um, really, kind of the I guess the seasons of trials. Um, I talk about, um, t- we talk about busyness, and we all go through times of busyness, and God allows us to go through those intense times. I call them seasons of warfare. And uh, as, as we know throughout history, um, men and now men and women, but men historically have been sent to war at times. And um, uh, this is not a, a statement about the, the, that in, in and of itself, but that there was a season where they were going to be gone, just fully em- engaged in something. And I think that there is times where we have seasons of warfare, um, but you can't live in a season of warfare in life in general. But then there are times where there are um, unplanned seasons of trial and difficulty. And the last few years, my, my daughter had bone marrow cancer, leukemia, and she was, you know, when we started the process, we didn't know whether she would um, live or not when we started a bone marrow transplant. And by God's grace, um, she, she survived, and the Lord brought us through that. We had to move to Seattle, all different kinds of things. And, you know, you, you kind of feel like there's... Um, things pile on each other. And then this January, um, my son Nathaniel and I were, were on a trip to the Philippines. I was ministering there, uh, helping to equip some um, Christians and help encourage pastors. And my wife was back in the States. Our little boy, who was just two weeks shy of one, um, had a tragic accident. And um, uh, he he basically drowned and he was revived um, by my son and then the paramedics and hospital they worked on him for about 55 minutes and which is longer than they normally do and he revived but lived two weeks longer so I was able to get back with my son Nathaniel we made it back in less than 24 hours and to spend time uh, with our our son in the hospital his name is Lemuel and uh, he passed away two days after his uh, first birthday. So it's been, you know, an incredibly hard uh, season, harder than anything I, I have ever experienced. I've buried, I've done funerals for family members, my own father, um, my grandmothers, little children in the church that I cared for and grieved tremendously with them. But being a parent and... and, and um, we've miscarried before, and that was devastatingly hard, and that's not, I don't want to, what I'm saying now, don't translate it in, in any way, but there's something about, um, there's a, a different kind of grief when you've had a season of the relationship outside the womb, and um, the life is no less significant when they perish in the womb, but uh, having a year to be uh, with your son, and then to have him to go home to be with Jesus has been really hard. So, if I, you know, grief is something that is real, even for a Christian. We've never had, um, we've never doubted God or his goodness or questioned our, our, our Christian faith. Um, and we haven't asked God, uh, why? But I think um, we have asked God, why? An open hand, just wondering, why? And uh, it's felt like a season, you know, where like, we've talked about uh, like being in the waves and the waves constantly crashing over and you're just being pushed under with waves of grief. And now it's better, we're, we're like, floating on top of the waves, but then the waves crash over at times, and it can happen at a moment. It can happen, you know, uh, hearing a song that was special at that time, or um, 
getting on a plane and seeing a little baby boy that's the same age, and I am delight in seeing them, but at the same time, it's just overwhelming. And so you can pray for our family, pray for my wife, and pray for um, our little children. You know, when you have a large family, everybody doesn't grieve at the same moment. We, we all grieve together when one grieves. Uh, we weep with those that weep, right? But at the same time, you know, there will be times where, you know, your five-year-old wants to get up and watch the video of Lemuel's pictures and wants to play the playlist that has the songs that are um, bring us back. And so you, 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 um, you have to just take time for that because right now that's what God has ordained in our life in that season. And um, you know, the words that uh, were spoken by David when he said in different circumstances in his life, but he said, he shall not come to me, but I shall go to him. And I'm confident that, that uh, one day we will, we will meet again. And uh, I was pondering something. I, I told my wife I was, I was afraid, and hope I'm not getting too personal. I told my wife I was afraid not wanting to forget him and then thinking about him uh, you know, what will he be like if he was 12? What would he be like when he was six? What would he be like when he was 18? And my wife said something very profound. She said, you don't have to imagine that because he was never meant to be. He was meant to be one and two days. And so um, trying to savor that and just recognize that that's what God had and, you know, All of my kids uh, uh, love me as their dad. Uh, I'm pretty positive. But uh, as, little, as little babies, of all of our kids, Lemuel was the one who I would come to the door and he would crawl to me and go like this and sit on my lap and rub my beard. And uh, I miss that. Great, thanks for sharing this such a personal part of your story because um, it is part of Craig's life we thought it was really important and he was willing to talk about that please do keep Emily and the family in, in prayer because this is actually the first trip that they've taken together away and so obviously it brings up lots of, of memories and fresh fiery darts so um, during this time that we spend together Craig, what are some of your hopes and prayers for the time we spend together with the families and the people who have come to this conference over this weekend? Um, like Chris said earlier, uh, you know, I'm not here as an expert. I'm not a traveling conference speaker. I do occasionally speak at conferences, but that's, that's not my, uh, my normal thing. I'm a pastor of a local church and a, a dad a husband, and I just want to get to know you and um, rub shoulders with you. Um, I'm, gr I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here, uh, excited to learn more about New Zealanders and New Zealand culture, uh, and just to, to know that I love people wherever. I have had the privilege to go to many different foreign countries. That's the thing that I, I love to do. And typically, I go to a third world country and take, uh, take my, one of my children with me as an opportunity to serve and to, to minister in places where most of the world's population lives and how they live and to just care for people. And so um, I just want to say uh, I love you guys already, and I want to try to be an encouragement and help to you. And... Um, if there's something I can share this weekend that would be an encouragement to you, then I say, uh, praise the Lord. And I know already there's been people that um, have shared with me, even just being here this evening, and have already been a blessing to me. And the works that you're doing and involved in, I'm really grateful for. And had some great conversations mm -hmm. today at a coffee shop in uh, Les Leston. Leaston. Leaston. <laughs> and uh, uh, met a man that that uh, doesn't know the Lord. 
he had a family member die in the in the earthquake or not the uh, the uh, the uh, earthquake that took place and just those are opportunities that I pray that God will give me the 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 opportunity just while I'm here just to meet people and do what do what I would do wherever I was so Craig would you mind praying for us and we'll worship together let's pray our great God and heavenly father we thank you for this uh, night here at the engage conference I pray that you be with my brothers in Christ as they seek to learn and to grow about how to lead and shepherd a family in a grace-paced way. And Lord, I pray that we would really examine our hearts and our lives and see what are the things that are consuming our lives that are um, really not the things that we should be focused on. That, that don't have the eternal benefit and uh, blessing. Lord, help us to have a, a striving for balance as men leading and shepherding our homes. Lord, be with the ladies that are here, both those who are mothers and those who uh, are not. Lord, help them to have a heart, if they are married, to support and to uh, complete and encourage uh, their husbands in uh, a good and noble work of serving the Lord as a family in both their home and in the local church and having a heart for evangelism and, and being willing to give of themselves, not just for their families, but to give towards uh, loving their neighbors as themselves, as they love God. And that, that is, uh, fuel in, uh, for hospitality and care for other people. Lord, be with the, the youth and the children that are here May this be a time where they too grow and learn. And I pray that, uh, that they would have a, a desire to ask questions, even as the sessions tomorrow will deal with uh, topics that are uh, varied from uh, gospel-focused living to um, smartphones and how they may be a, a help or uh, a hindrance to us. Lord, help us to uh, help the, the youth to have a, a, an openness to ask questions and to evaluate their own lives and practices. And I pray for the children, Lord, that are here, that they would be richly blessed as well. We pray for them, everyone here that does not know you as their Lord and Savior, to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and that they might be a completed um, man or woman in Christ. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.